Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's part 62 today and we are back for two massive games in the context of Southampton season. It's one earlier than planned because we've got our rescheduled tie with Bournemouth in the South Coast Derby and it's followed up by a reunion for ourselves with our former club, Derby County. So if you're looking forward to that one after a blistering start to the Premier League season, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. You can see we're just about averaging two points a game still, although we've got a very difficult run of fixtures coming up. So if you want to stay up to date and see if we can stay up there, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You can catch up with all the other playlists in the eye above as well as a link to the podcast channel. And thank you so much for your continued support. But we've basically got to make the most of these two games and West Brom straight after. Because after those three, if I go and show you the fixtures, we face Manchester City away from home in the league, United away in the Carabao Cup, followed by Liverpool and Arsenal at home in the Premier League. So basically, those four games, we're expecting no points and a knockout in the Cup. And that's going to knock us back down to a more reflective mid-table position. Because although at the moment we're still up in fourth place, we're only four points clear of Wolves in seventh. We're only seven points clear of eighth. And once you get to the likes of Arsenal and Tottenham, who have had a poor start, they're going to start to catch us pretty quick. I'm sure of that. But either way, we didn't expect to be on 27 points at this stage. Don't forget we stayed up with 35 last year. We're only eight points off that total already. Neil Lennon in charge of Bournemouth today. That's an interesting move, certainly. But before we go and get into that, let me very quickly show you what's been happening on the schedule. So you were with me last time, not many games ago, as we played Tottenham and United and produced two remarkable defensive displays. Now what's happened since then is a little bit weird. We've not scored less than two in any game, which is virtually unheard of for us. And we've not kept a clean sheet, which we've done in almost every game before that. So it's a bit of a turnaround in terms of form, but we're still picking up points. We can't complain. So 2-1 win at home to Burnley was first. A late consolation ruled out two Amp Folwell goals. A 3-3 draw in the Carabao Cup. Adam Idar caused chaos against us. Didn't do well for us in the Luton Christmas safe, but certainly did there. Volkov, Gosling and Vargas with a goal each for us. Of course, we promoted Gosling to the first team. Great to see him doing well. And Jao Mario, the Portuguese international, is the one who missed the crucial penalty. Into November, a 2 all draw away at South Coast rivals Brighton. We were 2-0 up in this one through Volkov and Folwell, but we just couldn't cling on. We ran out of steam late on, and unfortunately, it ended up costing us. It was followed up by an expected defeat away at Chelsea, 4-2 on this occasion. They've still got Mason Mount. Fabio Silva got one too, the Wolves youngster. Martin Odegaard, currently at Arsenal on loan from Real Madrid, he got one too. And Merid Demaral wrapped it up. Bednarek off the bench with a goal for us and Amp Folwell continued his scoring streak. A 4-1 win followed at home at Sheffield United. We went one down after 10 minutes. We didn't look great, but an Amp Folwell hat-trick and a goal from Amadou Haidara made it a comfortable victory to keep us in the top four. So all in all, we're absolutely flying. And this season, it's about how high can we finish. We've seen in real life, Southampton were top of the league in November. They're now bordering on a relegation battle so you don't want to get too excited too soon but I've got optimism it's all a bit promising if we can keep them up here till January who knows which club in crisis will come calling we're looking at Spurs and Arsenal in mid-table of the Premier League we're looking across Europe there's some other clubs struggling maybe we do get a big boy this early we'll wait and see but into the first game today against Bournemouth everything looking brilliant off the pitch so let's go and get into the action on it Leicester have held Manchester United in the first game of the day and now we've got a chance against our South Coast rivals to really try and cement a top six or at least a European place. But unfortunately, we have got a few little knocks today. Ward Prowse is on his way back from injury, but Amate misses out. Campes misses out, more importantly. And we're just a little bit short in a couple of positions. The same team has been playing over and over. We're running out of steam a tad. But this is what we've gone for. It's Odyssey's in goal. The back five has remained the same. Bernardo and Walker Peters, the fullbacks with Stark and Salisu at centre half. Hydara and Ward Prowse reunited in the middle. Gineppo over on the right. Evgen moves across to the left. And Volkov in as the number 10, having a good little spell this season. And Folwell's up front. He's banging them in for fun. He's improving even more. And at 21, it's only a matter of time before he goes for big money. He was happy enough that we'd put effort in to get a replacement in the summer, even though it was nothing to do with us. So he's not causing a fuss now, but he still wants to go in January. So it is going to be a matter of time now. But a really good lineup, a bit of consistency. And although we're missing a Brazilian wonder kick campaigns, I'm confident we can still get a result. 
So Southampton v Bournemouth, we've lost our defensive solidity, but we've started scoring goals. So which one is going to happen today? Let's go and find out. Here we go then. Pepe in on the wing for Bournemouth. They've got Jefferson Lerma there still. Karamoko Dembele, the Celtic youngster. Chris Mepham still there at the back. Solanke still on the bench. Lloyd Kelly as well. It's a fairly familiar team for seven years in. So we're going to get the lads motivated. We're going to get into the first half. And fingers crossed from our point of view, we can sneak a win somehow. It was only this time last year we were sneaking one nils in games like this. And it was just about keeping us in the survival hunt. And now we're talking about a hunt for European places. As Bernardo throws in, Jefferson Lerma heads away. Only five on the clock as Ward Prowse finds Hydara. Up to Gineppo, tightly marked, but a lovely through ball to Bernardo. And it's a good save by the keeper for Bournemouth. And it's tipped behind for a corner kick. It'll be an in-swing up from James Ward-Prowse. We know his delivery can be good. This one is as well, but Fowell loses out. Of course, he's only short as he's headed away as far as Denair. Volkov working all the way back. You've got to give him credit. And it's a brilliant sliding challenge too. Still nil-nil with five gone, but the first big chance goes to Southampton. And it's a throw on the left-hand side for Bournemouth. Leto throws it into Denner. Up to the centre forward. Tries to switch the play, but Bernardo intercepts. Of course, missed that chance at the start. Falwell somehow wins the flick on. Volkov gets there. Finds Gineppo on the right-hand side. Three in the middle. One of them's Volkov. And he's put it in at the near post. He is really starting to come into his own in this number 10 role. Sergei Volkov, we questioned for so long. Why was he rated as a wonder kid? His attributes still don't match it. But he's starting to improve and he's starting to become a big game player. Brilliant start to the game so far. And with 25 gone, Southampton lead again. And this time we're defending a throw in from Bournemouth. Down the right hand side to Dembele. Tries to switch the plate. Haidara nicks it. And we've won it high up the pitch so often this season. Haidara's got there. And to be honest, it's been a feature of our play. We win the ball high and we counter at speed. As Walker Peters surges down the right. He's got Gineppo with him. The cross is blocked. Back to Haidara and Ward Prowse. To Evgen. To Folwell. 1 2 to Evgen. And he rattles the crossbar with a brilliant effort. And Bournemouth, they're hanging on by a thread here. What I do want to worry about is whether we take advantage of this. Because if we don't, and it's 1-0 at half-time, it could come back to bite us on the backside. But as it is, we've got another attacking throw with Bernardo. Plays a 1-2 with Ward-Prowse. Chance for Ward-Prowse to cross the skipper. Gineppo loses out in the air. Falls for Haidara. To Walker-Peters. Good through ball to Gineppo. And there is the second off the far post. A brilliant finish from him. It just rattles the post into the back of the net. And Southampton 2-0 up against Bournemouth. And it's thoroughly deserved. What's brilliant about this is we're starting to look a threat going forward. We've built from the back. We've been really solid. And now we've got cutting edge too. 45 minutes gone. We've reached the halfway mark. And it's Southampton 2, Bournemouth 0. A thoroughly dominant display. We're going to keep the boys riled up. Keep them motivated. We're playing the South Coast rivals. And Chris Meppham's playing from the back. But all the signs are starting to look good. Why would Falwell want to leave this team? As Dembele goes wide to Dumfries on the right. Beats the fullback. He's got the chance to cross here. Gets it into Vlahovic. And that is something that's becoming a habit. Three times now this season, we've conceded from the second half centre kick. I don't know if it's the team talk. I don't know if it's the team mentality. But it's not a good sign. We've given Bournemouth a lifeline. And my word, they don't deserve it. 20 minutes to go. I was about to make the first change and Leto's got a throw in for Bournemouth here. They're really coming back into this second half. They're coming down the left-hand side. They're chasing down, but it's into the box. Knocked down for Pepe. And that is the worst own goal you will ever see. Stark tries to hoof it clear. Volleys it into Salisu. And from the edge of the box, it's in. This is sort of what happened against Brighton. And you can see what I mean. The defensive mistakes are really starting to creep in. We're going to bring on Vargas as an inverted winger on support. But from the first half, it's almost criminal that we're losing this. It really is. So Farwell's got the centre kick to Haidara. Now it becomes a make sure you don't lose mission. As Salasu gets it wide to Vargas, the sub. Can he make an instant impact? Switches the play to Gineppo. Starting to get a bit tired, but still on the ball. He's got a chance to go left to Vargas again. He's got an overlap if he wants it. Goes into the box. It's a good challenge by Dumfries. Only falls for Bernardo by the corner flag. Into Vargas. Turns and crosses. Falwell's there. And Falwell with his 10th for the season. Vargas does make an instant impact with a cross. And we're back in the lead. Southampton 3-2. And now we've got to defend a bit better. 15 minutes to go. We are going to take Ward-Prowse off, who's still on his way back from injury. Dominic Goslin, the youngster, on for him. And with 15 left, it becomes a mission of defending. Volkov shattered in the number 10 role. Gineppo the same on the right. 
We've got Giroud on the bench. He doesn't often make it, so let's bring him on. Giroud as the number 10 with 10 minutes to go. And hopefully it will be enough for us. We will start to go more defensive shortly. I nearly did it by mistake there. But the stoppage time's announced. It's five minutes added on. So let's get to the tactical instructions. Let's get the fullbacks onto defensive duties. You all know how we cling on to this. It's normally 1-0 rather than 3-2. But we'll take it. Gineppo drops into midfield. Vargas the same. We drop to a balanced mentality. In possession, we're not going to look for the overlaps. We're going to time waste. We're going to be disciplined. We're going to slow the pace down when we get it. We're not going to counter at speed. And we're also going to drop those lines of engagement. We'll let them play out from the back. And we'll press them once they get into our half. Five minutes of stoppage time to hang on. I think we've stifled them again. And it finishes Southampton 3, Bournemouth 2. We win against the rivals. We keep the fans happy. And somehow, we stay in the top four. Now, the big problem is we've got to get some of these arrests. Because in three days, we face our former club derby. And if we do all of that hard work and then lose to a side in the relegation zone and a club that I left to come here, I'll be absolutely furious. So let's give ahead to it and hopefully it'll be another positive result. I'll see you there. We're back to face Derby County and there's quite a lot of good news to be honest. We've got Campes and Amate back fit. We've also got an A-star manager performance review from the board. They've made extra transfer funds available. I mean, not a huge amount, but it's an extra 10 million or so, which means the director of football might be able to add one in January. I'm looking at the players he's been scouting. This guy keeps popping up. Three and a half star left back for a million pound. He has to go and get him. So cross your fingers for that one, but we'll see what happens. And Falwell's won player of the month for the Premier League and young player of the month, of course. We've had bad luck in the FA Cup draw, as we always seem to this year for some reason. We've drawn Chelsea away from home. So just like Liverpool last year, that's probably going to be quite difficult. I don't think there's anything else that's particularly worth talking about. However, we have also got to mention the fact that that transfer from the last episode, Stephen Hilton, he's now agreed to join the club. So 775000 He joins in two years' time. It's the best signing I've ever seen. I've never seen a 15-year-old centre-half this good in the game. I mean, you can let me know in the comments if you have, but... For me, that's the best one I've ever seen. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's like here. Even though, let's be honest, we'll probably be gone. By the time he gets to the club, I'd imagine we'd have moved on by then. But let's go and get into the second game of the day. It is against our former club, Derby. And they are currently bottom of the league. Five points from 14 games. But these are the type we lose. They've still got Jacob Hall. He's a superstar on the right wing. But I think where it all went wrong for them, because don't forget they ended up in the playoffs last year. It's just after we left, literally a couple of weeks later, they sold Morgan Whitaker for over 20 million to Norwich. Now, I know on paper his stats don't look amazing, but he was an absolute gem for us. And we got him playing, we got him scoring frequently. I mean, under us, he had his most successful season. He'd scored 13 goals by the time he left last January. So I'm not quite sure why they sold him for 20 million plus a player who wasn't that good. But I think that was the start of the decline. So going into today's game against Aitor Karankor's men, we should really be getting the victory. But these are the games we slip up normally. So let's go and pick our lineup. We will bring Campes back in for Evgen. Although Gineppo's a bit tired. So I might have to do that as well. Volkov across. Gineppo drops out. Evgen number 10. And then what else can we do? In the middle, we're going to stick with what we've got. At the weekend, we play West Brom. I might have to rotate then. Because this game means more to me. So apart from Gineppo, I think we're going to go for everyone in the squad. We will bring Amate back in as well for Giroud. There's a few players like Simikas and Kovnaki who are unhappy with the amount of football they're getting. So we promised them that we'd loan them out in the meeting. And that's why they've been chucked on a loan list. But aside from that, this is our 11 and 18. Only the one change to the starting lineup from the last game. That's Campes coming back in after injury for the tired Gineppo. And everyone else shifts across one place. And that's it. We're into the derby game and we're looking for the same result. Hopefully, be a little bit more comfortable. But without Gineppo, we're missing a start. Let's see if we can win against our former club. Here we go then. It is quite a change for this side. Look at the side that we are top of the championship less than 12 months ago. The only people still in there are Johnston, Clark the Skipper, Max Bird and Jason Knight. They're the only four. Lobbins on the bench, as is Ryan Connor, as is Noah Greenidge and then Wilmot on cash too. But that is a huge turnaround from a side that was doing brilliantly just under 12 months ago. I'm intrigued to see what tactic they're playing because we're doing well as well. And if we can wrap up our place in the top four at Christmas with a win against Derby, that would certainly show that we've got the quality. 
and certainly show we've made the right decision. Interestingly, Derby playing a very defensive tactic, I guess slightly synonymous with Itor Karanka. But for us, it's not how we would have played with them because they were really working on the front foot. As early on, we get the ball in, it's hoof clear. But look at that, a 4-2-3-1 and just the striker up on his own. They've literally pushed the five-man midfield all back a position as we've got a free kick on the left with Ward-Prowse. They're inviting pressure, Stark heads across the bar. And to be honest, they've not got the quality to invite that sort of pressure. I'm sure we'll prove it right by keeping them a clean sheet today. But hopefully, I'll be proven right as Knight hoofs it downfield. The centre forward gets on the end of it, spins the defender. Little bit too easy for my liking. He gets wide to the byline, crosses it in, uses there and he's headed away. But now he can counter with Campes because they've committed men forward. Gets down the left-hand side, refreshed after his little break. All the way to the byline, chance to cross. Cuts it back to Hydara. 30 yards out, finds Ward-Prowse. He's got the left-back Bernardo. Instead plays Hydara again to Volkov. Walker-Peters overlap him. Volkov runs off him, gets in behind... And he shot straight at Johnston. It was a great opportunity, but it remains nil-nil on the night. And we're back for a derby goal kick. Sam Johnston, one of the survivors from our team, goes long. Flicked down a bit too easily for my liking there. And Max Bird finds Hodge, his centre midfield partner. Tries to switch the play. Walker Peters should get there. Lays in Nicholas Stark. He has made a difference this year, in fairness. We're not going to return on the investment, but he's played out so comfortably from the back. And here's Salisu doing just that. Switches to Campes on the left. The wonder kid made a massive difference and here he goes again. Plays Bernardo in, back to Ward-Prowse. We're definitely in the ascendancy, we're just not creating those quality chances just yet. Ward-Prowse tries to open it up though, cuts it inside to Evgen. Plays a 1-2, Ward-Prowse to Campes, taking on the fullback, gets past him, into the box. There's four in there, got to find one of them, Haidara's up, Volkov volleys against the woodwork again. How many times are we going to hit the crossbar today? Still nil-nil remarkably. But Southampton on top and an attacking throw again. Walker Peters plays a 1-2 with Evgen. Back to Hydara. Chance to cross. Goes back to Ward-Prowse. Walker Peters in. Falwell's there. He's not missed that. He's in the scoring form of his career so far. And he has put it over unmarked from six yards. That is astonishing. Remarkably at half time it looks like it's going to be goalless. But we have missed so many great opportunities. And we're going to have to pump these lads up. We're going to tell the lads that the fans expect a performance. We're going to get into the second half. And more of the same with our shooting boots on. We should win this comfortably. As Berg clears it downfield, Hydara picks it up. Finds Ward-Prowse to Hydara. Keeping the ball in the middle, but not really going anywhere. Ward-Prowse eventually releases Walker-Peters. Down to the right byline. His cross is blocked. Back to Hydara for a second time. Here's Ward-Prowse. Back to the centre-half Stark. We're starting again. We're not really finding that penetrating pass. Stark goes short again. All a bit safe at the moment. Walker-Peters tries to switch it. Campes loses out and Hughes hoofs clear. They're not aiming for anyone. They're just trying to cling on and hoof it clear. As Campes picks it up left-hand side to Ward-Prowse. Turns inside to Hydara. Walker-Peters is free on the right but instead plays into centre midfield. Eventually the switch comes. Here's Volkov. Chance to take on the fullback. Gets to the byline. Cross is blocked again. Back to Walker-Peters. His cross is in. Evgen heads in at the near post. And it is 1-0 to Southampton. Deservedly so. And it's finally come in the 47th minute. We've huffed and we've puffed. We've finally created a great chance. And we take the lead. Up to third place as it stands. A remarkable start to the season continues. We've got a throw in at left back with Bernardo. Into Evgen. Can the confidence build from the first goal? Can Pace find Hydara? Up towards Folwell. Back to Volkov. Chance to shoot. It's blocked back to Hydara. Into Evgen. And he scored again. We're going to VAR. The offside flag hasn't gone up. It didn't look it, to be honest. I thought he timed it well. So I'm hoping VAR will say this is onside. The referee puts his finger to his ear. Andy Madley has disallowed it. Offside given. It looked tight. Oh, it was Volkov from the initial pass. That makes more sense. Dominant display from Southampton. But we saw against Bournemouth. If you keep it at one or you keep it at two, you give your opponents a chance. 15 minutes to go. There are some really tired legs in this team. So I'm going to replace Volkov on the right wing with Vargas. I'm going to take off Hydara, who looks shattered, for Lewis Travis. And we're just going to try and keep the ascendancy. We'll save the third sub for now. Bernardo's the one I'm tempted to take off for Simicas. I don't actually think he's made a league appearance this year. But with five to go, we're now at the stage where it's only 1-0. And after seeing no attacking highlights all game, here come Derby County. Down the left with Birder. 
back into Cash, the substitute, to Hodge, to Birder. It would be sickening to concede here. We have absolutely trounced them and wasted so many great chances. Wilmot, one of the other old school players off the bench, finds Greenidge, another one. Wilmot, he's got a man over on the right. Greenidge switches it though. Birder's in, he's got a man over. Birder crosses, Knight's in. And Derby County have equalised. Oh, that's infuriating. We've dominated the game and somehow given Derby the ultimate lifeline. Awful play defensively. And that's what you get for not putting the game away. We're going to draw one all against the bottom of the league side. And our old club come back to haunt us. We knew a few of them would be up for it. Jason Knight has done the job. And how we haven't won that game, I will never, ever know. Amp Falwell in brilliant scoring form. Miss sitter after sitter. We hit the woodwork three times, I think. And in the end, we've been punished. Derby County won, Southampton won. And the old club end up coming back to haunt us. I think it is important after that disappointment to give a bit of perspective. We are in fourth place after 15 games. Now, I understand Chelsea have three games in hand. They're unbeaten so far. They will be above us. But we're competing in that stratosphere for a top seven place, for a European place. We've reached the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup. We've done as much as we can this season. And I just hope a big club takes advantage of that and really comes in for it. I mean an elite club. We're not going to leave Southampton for anyone at this point because we're doing quite well. We've got a good side. But I'd really like to make our next move a massive one. What that relies on is our form continuing. And that's pretty unlikely this month. We've got West Brom away from home at the weekend. Then five awful games in a row. Two in the two cup competitions. Then three of the traditional big six in the league. So we're going to come back. We're going to leave it a while now. We'll come back towards the end of January. We'll play maybe the last game and transfer deadline day. Of course, if there's job news or anything else in the meantime, we will pop back for that. But if you did enjoy that double header, a thrilling win against Bournemouth and late disappointment against Derby County, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. We've got a bit of a special coming this Sunday as well. Before the Bangor City episode, of which there's a massive one Premier League based tomorrow, we've got our tactical special on Sunday morning. A few of you have asked about the narrow diamond and how we set it up, so I've done an episode dedicated to it. So you can see it on Sunday morning, it's my first ever tactical special as such. But if you would be willing to come and check it out, it would mean an awful lot. We'll also be live streaming twice a week and you can turn that notification bell on to get alerts every single time we go live. There's links to all the playlists in the eye above as well as the podcast channel too. And a massive thank you for your continued support as always. It's greatly appreciated. But despite the late disappointment, all in all, a flying start with Southampton. And after the long relegation battle last year and the narrow escape on the final day, this is absolute dreamland. We hope it continues and I'll see you next time to find out if it does.